We live in a 3D world. We fly in a 3D world. Why would we want to design courses with only 2D obstacles? Hang around. We're going to explore 3D obstacles in a second. Go drone X. We're starting to see really incredible structures for our drones. However, these structures are not realistic for the average organizer in a grassroots organization. I've taken a look at how to do 3D obstacles for the grassroots drone racing organization. So some of them are easy, some of them are hard, some of them are wins, some of them are fails. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the most common easy way to do a 3D structure for a grassroots organization. The good old fashioned pop-up tent. They're around $80 and they take less than an hour to set up. We just pop it up and we usually extend one side here with some PVC and we can either do figure eights, passovers, and if we wanted to, we could even do a basic uh, split S, I call it a, a vertical slalom. Boop, boop. We roll it and come right back underneath it. So very affordable. The problem with it is it's only about 12 feet high. There's a peak here that we have to avoid, so you got to get these extensions to come up. And it's you can't really go much higher without adding stays. And when you start adding you know, secure lines which function as stays, at that point, there's other options. So it can be unstable. It's not really high. It's really easy. It's really inexpensive, and most people have their stuff. This is not a fail. This is a win where I come from. However, the next step up is the hard way to do it, and I've done it this way. It's the heavy duty structure that you basically take an art canopy, if you ever did art shows or trade shows, an industrial grade tent that can take a good degree of wind and you don't put up the, the pyramid on the top. Um, it's super sturdy, it's configurable, there's no stays. Here's the downside, it's heavy. My bag weighs probably 130 pounds. The good news is I can go around 25 feet up with it and that's almost twice as high as I can do with a pop-up tent. It doesn't need stays. And if I want to, I can configure not only a figure eight course, but I can do other types of configurable courses like not only a vertical hairpin, but I can do a triple or a double vertical flush hairpin. So I can come up here, cut back through, and then cut back in again. It's a two hour setup, it's a four man job. The pop-up tents, two people generally to set it up. This takes at least four people and it's about two man hours to set up. So it does take time. And like I said, it's you know I have a ski bag to contain this. And I had somebody loaded in my car and they're like, holy crap, this thing's heavy. And I'm like, no kidding. It's my heaviest bag there is. It uses one inch electrical conduit. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's about 12 pieces in there. So it adds up. There's also industrial grade uh, joints. Let me show you where you can get those at. Good old Yuma's Bargain Warehouse. Yuma's Bargain Warehouse has all different types of fittings, but these will only work with one inch uh, EMT conduit pipes, which is actually what you want because the three-quarter inch is just a little too flimsy. Uh, the good news here is they've got a lot of variety. Get the the multiple T's, the one that looks like this. It's got one out to the left, one out to the right, one out this way, and one out this way. That way you can use it for lots of different configurations. The good news is these prices are around, I think I paid around five dollars a connection and I think I bought around 10 to 15 pieces in order to make it work. The bad news of that is when all is said and done, it's around 500 bucks. Is it a win or a fail? If your goal is basic grassroots organization to do true 3D obstacle flight, I would call this a fail because there's no reason to spend $500 when I can show you the next solution, which I believe is optimal for what we're trying to accomplish for uh, grassroots drone racing. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of this structure that we call the matrix. Here it is in basic situation with an over-under. Come through this way underneath it so it functions as a tunnel. And then you can come back over. And then we usually set up uh, gates on both sides of this so it requires a, uh, a flyover sandwich is what I call it. Here's another configuration I call the corkscrew. We named this after the Laguna Seca corkscrew. Here's an example of the simple version of the matrix. These are all the commercial poles. Notice there's no stays. The wind can throw this around up to around 25 miles an hour without it collapsing on us. You couldn't do this with PVC. It would just crumble at the slightest wind. We'd come out of the start finish. We'd come through this as a double uh, tunnel. We'd come around. There's a flag over on this side. Up and back over at the top, we have two little flags fastened up here. This is 10 feet. This is 10 feet, and these are around 4 feet. So we're going to be up around 25 feet when we come over the top. Over on this side, there's a flag. Uh, we come around it and then back through again. So it serves as a double on that corkscrew, how we did this setup. The last option that I found was the absolute best for us 
uh, the just right um, situation was the keyhole plus flagpoles. And what this is, is basically you go straight up with a structure and you use stays to keep it secure. Uh, you can either build your own by going across with EMT conduit using the same type of equipment over here, or in our situation, we have really good uh, quality aluminum poles that, that are interchangeable. So I, they come in five foot sections, so I can just keep on adding five feet and make the structure go all the way up. Uh, there's a, now there's available gates that you can buy that have little holes in them, and this opening is about five feet. So the wind passes through it, and because I can reuse my existing poles, I don't necessarily need to spend more money on and heavier equipment than uh, I need to. The advantages of this, again, it's, I can go very tall. It's very stable, assuming I use stays. Um, I can use my standard parts, including my flag poles, and it's really light because these poles are aluminum and not EMT. The problem is I really can't do figure eights, but that's okay, because what I really can do here is I can do double and triple split S's so I can get true vertical uh, structures. It only takes an hour to set up, but it does take three people, so you'll have one person holding this side, one person holding that side, and then somebody sets the stays into the ground while you're keeping it stable. Um, it takes about an hour to set up. Overall cost this is going to be around $80, so it's really affordable for a local guy. So you can see here we are setting this up. Uh, Wayne from uh, Detroit drove out to Champaign and I started to deliver this uh, prototype to Horizon Hobby. Contact Horizon Hobby, see if there, this is available for sale. I don't know. Um, this was their product. It worked really good. This whole shot right here is five feet all the way around. It's easy to see. It took a, quite a fair amount of hits. It did really, really good. Um, we used our own poles. Those are just five foot section poles that all slided into each other. These are the standard uh, poles that we use for our flags. Um, two guys hoisted up and then we, there was no wind today so we didn't have any stays. There's a good shot of it in the air. There's a shot of it in relation to the rest of the field. Here's a course design we did. This netted the fastest guy around 26 seconds. Most good pilots were coming in between 30 and 32 seconds which is about right. If we didn't do this slalom and a broadened slalom and kept it straighter, that would have knocked another second or so off. Go Drew next! See race results at GoDroneX.com and join the conversation on Facebook at GoDroneX and FPV Tree Racers.